Hey guys, Hackisploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. In this video, we're going to be looking at SQL enumeration uh, with SQL map. All right. So we're going to be focusing on the format that I explained to you guys, explained to you guys in the previous videos in the series. We will be, we, we will be following, following the OASP top 10 uh, format. All right. And if you don't know what I mean, uh, right now, as you can see on my screen, I have the Motility Day open, which is what we're going to be using. And if you go to the OASP top 10, you can see that the first section is injection. And we're going to be looking at extraction of data or enumeration of databases and how to dump databases, good stuff like that. We'll then move on to cross site scripting and then we'll be looking at session management, uh, CSRF, uh, so on and so forth. All right. So we'll be following the OS top 10 um, format. So uh, let me just explain to you uh, the environment that we're going to be using. So we are using Metasploitable 2 as our vulnerable operating system that does have Motility pre-installed. If you want to install Motility uh, locally, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, as for the penetration testing distribution, I'm using Kali Linux. Okay, so uh, let me uh, now explain or let me just tell you the tools that we'll be using. We'll be using SQL map and we'll be using burp suite. So uh, you might be a little bit confused and you might be wondering if we aren't performing any injection or brute forcing, why do we need a uh, burp suite or an intercepting pro proxy? The reason is, is we'll be using burp suite to capture a request, a request that will be then used in SQL map to enumerate the database in the first place. Okay, so uh, let me just explain now what uh, or why SQL, uh, SQL injection or the SQL, uh, it, why SQL is really, uh, is really vulnerable when it comes down to websites. Now, well, for you can keep it really simple and let me explain why this happens in the first place. So uh, in the most cases, one would find that SQL injection is very, very common because the site is not monitoring user input and they are able to enter in values that can then uh, either enumerate, delete or add a value to the database, which as you know, can be very, very dangerous. Now we are going to be using SQL map as our primary tool. Now, uh, let me explain what SQL map does because a lot of people have a few misconceptions about it and they really don't understand what it does. Uh, SQL map essentially automates the inform the reconnaissance and the exploitation of databases. All right, so its purpose is to, uh, to, to print out or enumerate the databases that currently exist and to help you in the exploitation of these databases. Now, again, I am going to pass a warning on to you that uh, do not use this for any illegal purposes uh, in terms of uh, SQL injection or just enumerating data that might be on a database because it is highly illegal and uh, a lot of sites are vulnerable to uh, SQL uh, exploits. Uh, even if you're just talking about uh, the enumeration of data. So uh, we are going to be using uh, Matilda Day and to get started, I'm just going to make sure I have my OS top 10 open here and I'm going to go into uh, A1 injection and SQLI uh, extraction, the extraction of data and we'll click on the page that is vulnerable. So user info. All right. So you can see that this is a login page or uh, in this case, a view account details page that allows us to enter a name and a password combination, which we can then use in SQL map. So uh, make sure you have burp suite fired up. You can use the community edition will work just fine. All right. So let's start a burp suite and uh, it appears my JRE is to the uh, is the latest version and it's not fully tested. No problem. Just launch it. I don't have an issue with that. You can also use zap if you wanted to, but uh, we're going to be sticking with burp suite because that's what most of you are comfortable with. So you can use the community edition just fine. Uh, since all we're doing is we're intercepting the request that is being sent in this login form right here. So let a uh, burp suite start and uh, we want to make sure that intercept is on and it is on. Fantastic. So now we need to go into our preferences here and into our connection and we make sure that we're using a proxy, the proxy configuration, the burp suite proxy, which is localhost at port 8080. Excellent. Now uh, we need to capture the request that is being sent, uh, you know, from the my web browser to the server. We need to intercept that and we can then use that uh, with SQL map to enumerate the database first of all. All right, excellent. So we can just test, uh, we can enter a random value in here 
Um, so let's say we enter a name and something like uh, one, two, three, four, and we can just hit view account details. So we should have intercepted the request with BUP. If not, just give it a few seconds and it should intercept the request. Uh, if it does take a while, you can reload the page, but um, I think anytime now we should get the, well, for some reason, I'm, I'm not getting all the information here. I'm not too sure why this is happening. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reload the request if I can. Let me just try and do that again. So I'm just going to let these packets through and I'm just going to reset it again. It's going to tell me uh, name and uh, let me enter the password again. And for some reason, okay, so we need to allow intercept on again now. And uh, we're going to try that again. So you can use whatever value you want. At the end of the day, it's going to be used for the enumeration process. So let's see what data, if we're able to capture the request here. Um, for some reason, it isn't displaying everything. All right, so yes, this is the request. So it is get, there we are. We were able to intercept it, excellent. Uh, there were some anomalies with the first one. So what we need to do now is we need to save this request. So to save it, uh, this is a quick tip for you guys. You can just right click on the, on the raw format here of the request and just hit save item. All right, so I'm gonna be saving my request on the desktop. So I'm just gonna call it request dot uh, txt make sure it's dot txt that usually works best with sql map so i'm going to hit save all right excellent we have saved it and now we have no use for burp suite so we can just minimize that and uh, we can disable the proxy and uh, we should have disabled intercept so no proxy here and let me just disable intercept excellent so now we can definitely tell that that username and password does not exist but now we have to use sql map so let me just fire up my terminal here and uh, let me expand it because a lot of you guys have asked me to do that. So there we are. And, and now we need to use SQL map. So let me explain something about the, this, um, uh, what's the word for this? The syntax behind SQL map. The syntax is really very simple and I hope to explain it to you as we use more and more commands because uh, really I can't do justice, uh, you know, to the syntax or I can't explain it to you just by talking about it. So you can see, um, that the usage options here are all in the form of uh, a few letters and words, but I'll be explaining what each of them does as we move along. All right, so let's start off with, first of all, enumerating databases using the request that we were able to intercept and the request that we were able to save. So to do this, we use the SQL map command, all right, and we specify the request using the R command, and now we specify the location. So mine is saved root desktop and uh, request.txt. All right, you could have saved it wherever you wanted to. The process still remains the same. Make sure you specify the exact directory. Um, we then use the D, uh, the DBS command, which enumerates any databases uh, with uh, or in regards to the request that is being sent. So I'm gonna hit enter and um, it's going to start enumerating and uh, it looks like there were multiple injection points. So there are multiple injection points. So it's gonna ask us, to select the one that we want to use. Since we're not doing any injection, we're just gonna use the get parameter and uh, the type, which is the first uh, option here, which is option zero, I'm gonna hit enter. And there we are, we were able to get information in regards to the database version, which as you can see, the backend database is MySQL. It's gonna tell you the web server operating system, Linux Ubuntu, uh, web application technology is using a PHP 5.2.4 and Apache 2.2.8 and the backend uh, database is MySQL version 5. It was able to fetch database names, so we were able to get, um, let me see, seven databases. We have the DIAM Vulnerable Web Application Information Schema, Metasploit, uh, MySQL, OASP Top 10, that's the one we're focusing on right now. And we have TikiWiki, these are all in regard, these other databases are all related to other web applications that were installed on the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. So we want to focus our, inf our uh, we want to focus our attention on the OASP database. So how do we do this? So now we need to select a database. We need to check for tables in this database. So uh, again, we're, we're trying to get more information here. So uh, we can say, uh, the command will be SQL map, all right? And we are still using the request because this is our way in, or this is our way of getting information in regards to the database. So root 
sorry, yes, root desktop and um, request. All right, so request.txt. And now we need to select our database. So to do that, we use the capital D command. And now we select the name of the database, which in this case is OWASP 10. Excellent, OWASP 10. And now we want to enumerate the tables. So that is done using the tables command and uh, we hit enter. All right, hopefully we're able to enumerate the date, uh, the tables. If you get this, it's pretty much asking you how you want to use the request to enumerate the information. We want to use the default way because that has the get, it's a get request with the parameter of password first. All right, so that is the default one. So we'll use that and we're gonna hit enter and there we are. So we're able to get uh, the tables for the database OWASP 10. We were able to get six tables. We were able to get accounts, blogs table, capture data, credit cards. Hmm, interesting. Hit log uh, and pen test tools. So hmm, from a pen testers, uh, you know, from a pen testers mindset or a black hat hackers mindset, this would be the most enticing thing right here. Hmm, interesting. But first, let's start off with accounts because I know there is some juicy information in there. And this will show you the real threats that can be caused even with the enumeration of a database without performing any injection, really. Okay, so now we want to dump the database, uh, more specifically the table in the database. So to do this, uh, we use SQL map again, and we are still using the request that we saved which is root, very, very important to capture the request, um, root desktop and the request.txt. Um, we now need to select the database, so OWASP, um, OWASP 10, and we now need to select the table, which we are specifying. The table is uh, the accounts, is that the name? Yes, accounts, uh, whoops, sorry about that guys. Accounts, and I was about to do one of my classic mistakes here, uh, a typo, accounts, and um, we want to dump, so we use the dump command. I'm pretty sure that's the command. Uh, anyway, let's see if this works. I have to brush up on my SQL map skills. I'm gonna hit enter. And if it gives you the same uh, request, don't worry, just use the default request. I'm gonna hit enter and uh, voila. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very interesting information we were able to gather here. So we have the usernames, we have uh, the admin, whether the username, the user is an admin, and the password. Um, the, 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 the thing I want to explain here is you might be asking and saying, well, ha ha ha, this was designed to be uh, you know, vulnerable. Uh, that's why the, you can see the passwords. Well, let me just point out that I have performed SQL uh, enumeration before and some companies or some websites store passwords in clear text in clear text and you if you think I'm lying you can check out how many of the other websites like Ubisoft that were hacked their passwords were stored and credit card numbers were stored in clear text this is how dangerous this can be and again that's what I'm trying to say please use this information you know for in for the right reasons and learn about these things and hopefully we'll be looking at how to mitigate them although you 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 are going to be quite limited uh, the, the the whole power comes in the terms of, for the, from the hacker's perspective, all the power is in the login forms because that is where they can really play around with requests and uh, you know they can enter information into the system which if not monitored correctly can be processed by the server uh, or by the back end, in this case, the databases. So you can see the real danger here. So we can just try one uh, again now instead of using uh, the accounts, which is good information anyway, we can try credit cards all right, so let's try credit cards now. And again, we'll be using the same syntax, so you don't need to worry about anything in, except this time, we're just going to be changing the uh, the name of the table from accounts to credit cards. What's the exact name of the, uh, of the table? Credit cards, all right, excellent. So credit cards, let me just enter that right now. Uh, credit and cards, and I'm gonna hit enter. Let's see what we're able to dump here, I'm gonna hit Oh, and yeah, so there you are, credit card numbers and the expiration date of them. Uh, the, even the CCV number, which as you know, is probably like your security for the credit card when trying to perform transactions online. So uh, in clear text, and you can imagine the damage that can be done here because you are, eventually you have every piece of information. And usually what happens is that the hackers who hack websites and get this type of information, uh, what they do with these numbers is they sell them on the deep web uh, or on any other types of marketplaces. 
Uh, that being said, I'm not putting any ideas in your head. This was the first section of using the SQL injection vulnerability and using SQL maps. So I hope you guys found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks or on my website. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.